Hello friends, in this tutorial you will see how to create a Kubernetes cluster using the network cutter network interface plugin called Beam Network. So when we have uh, used this default network that is going to be the kind net. So that will not be used for multicast. Even if you create a multi-node Kubernetes cluster using the default network called kind net, you will not be able to use, uh, configure the multicast. Okay, so for that, we are going to use Weave Network, so which supports multicast encryption and other container orchestration platforms, Swarm and Visas. Okay, so so for that we are going to download the uh, Weave daemon set hyphen k it is, which is the version is latest version is 2.8.1, and then uh, we are going to use this uh, for the Kubernetes cluster when we bootstrap the Kubernetes cluster using the Minikube tool. Okay, so if, if you uh, look into the configuration, this URL is in the is available in the GitHub website. So in this GitHub website, we have the Weave network. So Weave network for version 8.1, we are going to download this Weave demo set type of KNS. So this uh, URL is available in the description. You can go through, you can download it in this uh, URL and you can keep it somewhere in your folder. So I have already downloaded and kept it in the C development view network. So, so view is view daemon set type of kts.yaml. Okay, so now I'm going to execute the minikube command. So minikube, when we execute the minikube command at, uh, when we create a Kubernetes cluster, so we are going to use the data plugin as CNI and then the CNI uh, YAML file is Path is to, needs to be provided. So the path is going to be view daemon set type k8s.yaml. This is the YAML file that contains the configuration of the view network uh, CNI. Okay, so profile is going to be view net test. Okay, so view net test and then the driver is going to be Docker. And the number of nodes that we are going to start is three. And in, the, in this tutorial, we are going to only start the Kubernetes cluster and then we are going to just see what happens after starting Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so so this, this is the command and we are not going to use use this mount equal to true and mount f and string. So instead of that, I am going to just start the Kubernetes cluster. So if you want to deploy any of the multicast servers like ActiveMQ Artemis, ActiveMQ Classic for the uh, dynamic discovery. So for dynamic discovery, we need a multicast protocol so to, be, to be enabled in the config.xml configuration and in Wildfly or JBoss, we can use whichever the server that uh, supports multicast. We are going to use that server to deploy it on, then we are going to configure it. So the minute is making it to, I am going to start and execute the command now. Let's see what happens. So I am into the C development view, which uh, where we have downloaded the view daemon set k8s.yaml. So here uh, in this URL, you can download it in your, uh, in your folder and then keep it ready so that we, will, we can able to start the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, now I'm going to start the Kubernetes cluster. So before uh, starting the Kubernetes cluster, make sure that uh, you start the Docker desktop. So Docker desktop contains, uh, uh, it, it is using the Docker desktop so that uh, we can boost up the Kubernetes cluster using the driver Docker. Okay, so number of nodes here that I'm going to use is three, one for control plane. So that is the master node and uh, two worker nodes uh, will be created using this uh, mini cube start command. Okay, so let's wait for, uh, for Kubernetes to get started. So once the Kubernetes is getting started, uh, we'll see the what happens after starting Kubernetes cluster. So we'll use the uh, Minikube dashboard to get downloaded and then we'll wait for the Kubernetes cluster to get started. Okay, so, so this is starting the second uh, node, which is a first worker node, the net test iPhone M02. This is going to be second node. So it is creating the Docker. Uh, Kubernetes worker node in the Docker container. So here we have another worker uh, worker node that is created in the view net test M03. So 
let's wait for it to, uh, to get started. After getting started, then uh, we will use the cooktl command to get to in order to view the uh, view net parts that has been created. Okay, so now I'm going to start dashboard. Dashboard uh, and profile name is VNet test. So once the dashboard is getting downloaded, then we will uh, it will automatically take it to the browser so that we will see the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, what happens before that? We are we can we are able to see the Kubernetes cluster. So here here I am going to use kubectl command. So both Minikube and Kubectl are uh, in the environment path so that we can use it uh, anywhere in any folder. So okay, Kubectl is a client to get parts and it is namespace is kube system oh wait so if you see here in this kubectl command here we have the three view network daemon so and we were if you if you watch this so we if we got the three nodes uh three parts view net one for the uh, master and another one for the two worker. So there are three parts that has been created. Okay, so it is if we go into this uh, Kubernetes dashboard UI, we have a Kube system. If you go to the Kube system, there is a daemon set. Okay, so the, we have got a VivNet daemon set. Okay, see so this VivNet daemon set. If you click on this, we will have we will have the multiple parts for the daemon set. So this daemon set will, will ensure that for each of the nodes, only one uh, part is been part will be created. Okay, so here if you see, ViewNet is uh, net with uh, hash code is created for ViewNet test M03. That is the third uh, node, and for the second node. We have test uh, m iPhone M02, one, uh, one uh, part has been created, and then uh, another uh, one is we net test that is going to be the master. Uh, one uh, part has been created. So for each of the uh, for each of the nodes, there will, there will be only one part will be created for the network, which is uh, we have installed as the view network plugin. Okay, so that's all about this uh, configuration for today. See you on the next video for configuring configuring the ActiveMQ Artemis. Okay, thank you for watching.